Hello, I'm Annabelle, Partner Launch Lead at Seckle, um, which is basically an onboarding function. So we work with partner firms, taking them through the journey to get their investment platform ready to launch. Um, in terms of who Seckle are, we're the embedded investment platform. What this means is we offer tax wrapper functionality, model portfolio functionality, custody, trading and settlement to allow you to offer investments and tax wrappers to retail clients. In terms of what I'm going to be taking you through today is an insight into how you can integrate with Seckle's API to embed an investment journey within your existing application um, via our API. So um, what you can see here on my screen is Postman. Um, this has the relevant calls um, to Seckle's API to create a client, create an ISA, create a payment um, and create a transfer um, and what the process would be. Um, the first thing to just remember is effectively you will build and design your tailored investment journey and then all Seckle is doing is you send us the information, we'll action it in the background and then send you back the um, valuation or the contract note or whatever it is. The first request that you'll look to make when integrating with Seckle is effectively logging into our system. So each firm will have or each platform we power will have their own um, five digit firm ID. This is effectively your own mini bucket um, in our database. So it means that we can um, confidently segregate data of different platforms. So you'll have a single machine login. So each time you interact with Seckles API, you'll send us this authentication request and you'll get a secure token back, which will be used in all subsequent requests going forward. When you're onboarding a client to the investment platform, effectively there's a bunch of mandatory information that we need you to collect. How you collect this information is largely down to you. We just need to be confident um, that the point at which you send us the information, you've got all the required fields. The other thing to just flag is around AML KYC. Um, so we rely on you as a platform operator to carry out um, KYC on your clients um, and have a process in place to review any false positives or um, any requirements for additional information. Once that's done, um, you'll then send us this request that has the key information. So you've got first name, surname, the client's address, their email address, um, and the other thing is the fact that they've accepted your platform terms. So this is effectively a regulatory document that outlines the relationship between you as a platform operator and your end client. Um, it will also contain a schedule of our custody uh, terms, which basically outlines who we are in the agreement, um, in the relationship as well. So once you've got all of that, you'd be able to send that to Seckle um, and will return you a unique client ID um, and that will just contain details of the client record. The next thing that you'd look to do is create an investment account for the client. So in this example, we're going to be creating an ISA. Um, we can also support um, GIAs, JISAs, pensions, including a fully digital um, drawdown flow um, and also third party products. On the account functionality, we also can support sub-account functionality. This basically means that um, a client could have three different ISA sub-pots, each of which is attached to a unique investment strategy. Any payments um, going into that sub-pot will get auto-invested to that investment strategy, and then they could have one for their adventurous allocation, their cautious allocation, and maybe just a cash pot as well. Um, all the wrapper administration is managed at the top level um, and then yeah you can just operate the different ones below. In this request you have a free text field to indicate the account name so in this example this client Fred Flintstone is saving for his car so that's what we've named the account. You'll also specify the investment allocation um, that the client's looking to use. So at Seckle, we have whole of market access to um, mutual funds, um, ETFs, uh, direct equities and investment trusts. Effectively, you'd create um, your own platform asset universe. Um, in your application, you'd show a range of different assets to the investor. They can then select which ones they want to, um, to invest in. And then you'd attach that to the investment account. So here, hit send. And that's going to return you the unique account ID of the wrapper.
which you can see here. So this is just returning the details that we've just created. We've got Fred's car savings, client ID that's attached to, and the investment allocation here. And the other thing that this has done is created what we call a client product ID. And this is effectively how we'd manage the administration of the ISA wrapper at the client level. So say you had those three subpots of the different ISAs with different investment strategies, you'd have the client product at the top, um, and any payments and withdrawals, we'd manage the ISA subscription at that level there. As part of opening an ISA, um, which you'd include in the investment journey, is the investor will need to review and accept um, the ISA product terms, uh, key features document, and the ISA declaration. Um, we have templates in place which you can use and brand up, white label yourself. Um, and you just need to make sure that the investor review these in your app. Um, and that acceptance is logged in our API. So what this request does is it retrieves that client product, which is the information on the client's ISA, and then it updates the client product to say, yes, the uh, client has accepted that. And that's just part of our regulatory requirements to make sure that we're recording that. Okay, so now you've got your ISA set up and your client set up, the next thing that the client's gonna look to do is make their first payment. Um, at Seckle, we have this concept of portfolio group transactions. And this basically is saying, I want to deposit some money. And when that money lands in my ISA, I want all of that to be invested in the asset allocation I've assigned to the investment account. So here, you can see the client is looking to deposit an amount of £1,000 um, into this specified account ID. In terms of payment methods that we uh, support, we have instant deposit functionality. So this means that provided that the um, payment has the correct expectation of, the, of a thousand um, pounds and it has the correct payment reference. So that's gonna be in the format of your firm ID and the investment account ID. And then thirdly, that the bank details match those that we hold on the client record. As soon as we receive that money, it's gonna instantly show up in the client's account. Um, so from the point of instruction, it should take maximum five seconds from showing up in the client's account. Um, you can also use third party payment providers like Open Banking um, to automate the payment reference um, and automate the expectation creation, which basically means 10 times out of 10, we can guarantee that there's going to be um, no manual intervention required um, in case one of those points were wrong. The other payment rights that we can support are things like debit cards um, or bulk payments from e-money wallets as well. So if I send this request, that's going to return a link ID. So that's just the unique identifier that's showing the transaction of the payment expectation and also the order that we're looking to invest. Next thing that we'll look to do is just settle the payment. So what's going to happen in the background is whatever payment provider you're using, they'll send that money to Seckle's client money bank account. When we receive it, provided that those details are correct, we'll then allocate that automatically via the system and the money will sh show up in the client's account. Once we have that money, the orders that we've created linked to that payment will automatically get routed to market for execution. So this is just pulling back those orders that we've created. This person is investing in Sainsbury's um, and the market will execute those orders, which I'm mimicking here. And then those va that value will show up in the client's investment account. The other thing to point out, which is important, is we do have two types of webhooks to allow you to build workflows off the back of um, transactions completing the market. So we've got one that will notify you any change in transactions. So if a order moves from pending to completed, we receive a webhook and then you can um, query for the new account balance. And also if a position moves um, up or down, um, you'll also get notified as well. So you can use that to embed that within your existing application and notify clients of the back of that or whatever you wanted. So what this is showing is the portfolio summary of the Wilma Flintstones investment account. So you've got your Sainsbury's stock here and the cash that's included. 
And then what you'd be able to do is embed this data within your application so the investor can get a sight of the valuation of their ISA. The other piece of functionality that we have is providing client regulatory reporting. So as part of operating as a platform operator, there's a bunch of different um, regulatory documents that you need to supply to the client. Um, all of these are automatically made available via SACL's API, um, which I will show you here. This will include things like contract notes, um, valuation statements, tax statements, direct debit mandates, all that kind of stuff. And it'll also be branded up um, in line with your platform branding. So you have your logo and your regulatory footer on the bottom. So if I show you this. So this is basically retrieving that contract note. In this URL, it'll take you to a PDF that has the contract note um, containing the details of that order transaction that we've just completed. Moving on very quickly, um, the other neat piece of functionality that we have is the ability to facilitate transfers between different product providers. So say a client had an ISA with um, a different provider like Hargreaves or AJ Bell or something like that, you'd be able to instruct a request to that provider to move their um, contents of I their ISA there onto your platform. And it's super straightforward to do this. All you need to do is retrieve the list of available providers that we have. The client would then select which one that their ICE is with. They'd then look to enter the seeding account reference of that ICE account here. Um, and also it will match on the client's address on that seeding provider. Once they've entered that information, hit send. And what's going to happen in the background here is we'll automatically send that message to the provider. They'll review the details, confirm that, they're, that everything's correct. Um, and then they'd send us back a valuation. So in this example, the client is requesting a £12,000 ISA transfer in cash. So they've sent that, they've sent us back that um, valuation. And then when we receive the money, we'll automatically allocate that to the client's account so that their transfer shows up in their uh, ISA. The important thing here is that all of this information is available via our API so you can keep the client up to date throughout the transfer process. And then just to round things off, once the transfer is complete, you'd probably look to show the client a valuation summary, which I will show you here. And this effectively shows all the different information that we have on that client. So you've got your cash position, you've got your stock position, which is Sainsbury's here, and then you've got also a summary of each of the accounts within the client's portfolio. So that's the whistle-stop tour of the client onboarding journey um, from opening an ISA to instructing a payment and processing a transfer. Um, thank you very much.